Hey everyone, it's uh, Joe and Isaiah from The Automator, and we were just working on a script, and, and I had asked Isaiah this earlier, I'm like, have you ever created DLL, like from the icons, instead of, because we were grabbing the icons out of a DLL, and I said, I, I've never done the reverse, you know, and he's like, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah and um, there's like two ways, usually if you program in C++ and other languages, you use your Visual Studio and there are some project settings for creating DLL files or resource files. But I remembered later on that, okay, but there's a tool like from 1999, <laughs> it's a very old tool. Is it still around? And I went to look for it and it's still there. And that tool makes it way easier. You don't have to have uh, Visual Studio or anything like that. You could just use this tool to not only extract uh, resources from any DLL executable and so on, but it also allows you to create in a very easy manner. And actually we just, uh, I wanted to show you real quick, how would I do that? And and just discussing so one is why we would do this right is right 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 you have hundreds you know or dozens of of icons do you really want to have all those files when people download your scripts right right so that's that's I basically i think I, I think for me that's my main concern when i have a script and i don't want it to be installing like a bunch of files right so it, it would be better if you are having a lot of icons in your program like to go ahead and have them in one file, just bundled together. So this is uh, the name of the script, the, the program. I'm not sure if that's a script or anything, but that's a program, very old program, resource hacker. And when you open it, you can either open a file or as I'm going to demonstrate right now, you can create a DLL from it itself right now. It has something that I do not like, which is that you have to select files one by one. <laughs> so that is something that I, I'm not really sure. I haven't used it in a long time, so I don't know if they- How did they uh, survive in 1999? I don't understand. It, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, like, yeah. But in any case, I think you can use uh, templates and stuff like that to go ahead and add things. But the funny thing is that uh, when I tried it, like uh, you have to select the file and I was like, one file, I cannot select multiple files. Like, come on, dude, allow me, just just, just let me. But in this case, uh, so if you have 300 icons, don't think about it. We'll write a, <laughs> we'll write a program for it. Yeah, you, and actually this is it's supposed, so this is actually helping you to create a script. So this creates, I think it is a VB script that it creates. And when you add the resource, it actually tells you kind of like the, the uh, it is creating kind of like a script file for you. That is the one that is going to be used. And here's the thing. So you have your icon, your icon group. And the more you add to it, the more it creates the, 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 so it goes ahead and adds the next icon. And so, so those on. of you who, who do stuff on auto hotkey and you use the, you know, like you add a, a system icon, you know, you right, point yeah. to the, the DLL or executable or, or image, um, and then you put a comma and then a number, right? That right. number is what he's referring to here. Is, oh, right? right, right, right here. It is actually uh, this uh, program is creating an index. So number one is referring to that file that you just added. Number two refers to this one here and so on. And later on, when you're using the AutoHotKey script and you refer to the DLL file icon number, this is exactly what you're referring to right here. So if you refer to the comma three, that it, it, this DLL file is going to be pointing the three to this file right here. So that's, that's main, basically what is going on. Now, after you have it like that, you can just go ahead and click on save as and gives you uh, the options to put it as a RC, res or DLL file. And in my case, I'm just going to create a, a severity.dll, which is, those are the icons for the script scanner to go ahead and tell about the severity of that particular thing. So if I go ahead and run the script right now, I'm referring to these icons here on the left, right? Now, these icons right now, as I'm doing them, they are separated each on its own file. And here I'm going ahead and looping over them like this. And each file name, I'm changing the number here. And it is kind of like a little bit too complex for me. I just go ahead and severity.dll and then the number, which would be a index, right? Um, so Wait, a, are those zero based? No, they're one based. 
Right. Okay. So that's the reason why number one right. here, the index yeah, is going to start at one and that's it. In resource hacker, I thought I saw it as maybe I've. Uh, not exactly. You you saw a zero, but it was not the beginning of it. It was uh, another information about it. Okay. So just by changing that line to the severity.dll, I can just go ahead and uh, do the script again. And it should not change. Everything is good right now. But now on my script, I can just go ahead and get rid of all those additional files that I need. So right now, I just go to my resource folder. And instead of having those files, I just go ahead and delete them. And I just have one DLL. So that one DLL file contains all my icons. Now, the funny thing about this is that usually DLL files are uh, not only used for storing resources, but also libraries of functions. So whenever you download uh, um, a DLL file, like for example, the SQLite DLL, right? So that's that's a whole bunch of functions compiled into a DLL. You can not not only add the functions, but also resources like images and icons. Mm -hmm. So you can have a lot of things into one file that in that makes your program a little bit more compact. Okay, so now you know uh, how to just go ahead and get rid of the thousands of icons you have there, right? You can just do it in a matter of minutes. Um, the one downside is that you have to add one at a time. I think that could be fixed uh, by writing the script it's instead of just uh, doing it through the GUI. But it's good. It, it is for, for what we need. We don't use that many icons that that doesn't matter that much, right? So that's no, okay. it's just a great intro to this topic, right? I mean, later, we, you know, we, we talked about actually creating an entire course talking about D, the relationship between DLLs and COM objects, which is a whole other, right. like, from, I've been learning from you. It's, it's amazing, fascinating. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one of the one of the, um, the scripts that we were uh, dealing with and we were kind of like uh, working with that has a lot of icons is also the the one that uh, the H key hub, the script hub. You remember that one? So this one in particular, we are in our script going ahead and for each script showing some icons here. Now, the good thing about this one is that we're taking them from this, the, the auto hotkey executable and some icons directly from Windows. So we don't have to create a DLL. But in case that I needed to add more icons to my menus like this, like if I had a lot of icons that are not from Windows and are not from an executable, then I could create my resource file that is going to have all my icons in one place, you know? So that's good. Cool. Awesome, man. Well, thank you for that quick overview. We're going to be talking later then. <laughs>